everybody. Where, where is everybody? It's not that nice out. I mean, come on. We'll make some noise and we'll, we'll make them follow us like we're sirens. Okay, our first song we're going to be doing is Trust and Obey. I was going to say take your hymnal, but it's up there. <laughs> first and fifth verse. When we walk with the Lord in the light of song I will trust in you one of the one of our Caribbean songs sleep, that he's on watch 24 hours a day. Um, if you don't believe that, I, I hope you will start to understand this by the end of the lesson because he is an ever-present God. 24 hours a day, when you need him, he's there. When you don't think you need him, he's still there uh, and he's ready to help. Some people, as we looked at last week, are just not content with this master's care. I gave them a name last week, and I called them fence crawlers. They're looking for the easy way out. They're looking for something else. We told you a story of a shepherd um, that had a perfect ewe lamb. Remember what a ewe lamb is? What is that? It's a mother lamb going to have babies, right? You were close. At least you were listening. Um, a mother lamb that has babies and is, is prime property. It's the best you can have. So he talked about this ewe lamb. It was wonderful, perfect in every way, but very discontent with the side of the fence that it was on and always looking for something bigger and better and something that was uh, more. Her behavior, though, caused her lambs to follow her and other sheep to follow her. And she would go along the fence line till she saw a break in it and would go through. 
and she caused all these other sheep and ewes to follow her. She was the head of the, the herd, and we're going to look at that this week and next week. So he had a hard decision to make because this one prize ewe was causing havoc. He said he gave him more problem than all the rest of the sheep together. You remember what he did with that lamb, that, that ewe? That's right. Slit its throat, and they had lamb chops. He could not put up with that. Um, it was his. It was bought with the price. And I think that kind of tells us, too, we were talking about um, our great God. If we are surely bought with the price, will only let us go so far because we are his. And there's going to come to an end to that. So as a result of a disobedient heart, we have sin and problems and issues. Um, we are not content. There is judgment, punishment, and correction that comes. And we read some passages in Proverbs to show that. Now this week, an intro to the lesson, and we're going to look at point one. The beginning of verse two says, he makes me to lie down. He makes me to lie down. I thought that was interesting. Why would you need to make a sheep lay down? It seemed to me that if a sheep is tired, it's going to want to lay down and go to sleep, right? What problems can a sheep really have? I thought this is going to be interesting. What can we find, find out about him wanting to make me to lie down. Well, as I did some research and some study, the strange thing about sheep is because of their very nature, it is almost impossible to get them to lie down. I was like, really? What is in their nature that causes them not to want to lie down? If I want to lie down, I kind of lie down. Well, there are four things. There's not just one thing, there's four. Four things are required in order to make them lay down. They need to be free of fear. They have to be free from friction of other sheep. I was like, that's going to be an interesting lesson next week. I really enjoyed studying that th this morning. Free from the friction of other sheep. You know, sheep are mean to each other. They call each other names. and Well, we'll find out exactly what happens. They need to fr be free from pests. Uh, swarms of, of flies and ants and gnats and stuff like this. And they need to be free from hunger. So their master has to provide this. So in order for them to lie down, these four things need to be present. The interesting thing is the only one that can provide these things for them is guess who? The shepherd. He's the only one that can provide these things for the sheep. So it's only the shepherd who makes it possible for the sheep to lie down, for the sheep to rest, for the sheep to relax, and to be content and flourish. Sounds like our shepherd, doesn't it? Kind of makes a little bit of sense now why God used the sheep as a metaphor for his followers. Point number one, a flock that is restless, discontented, agitated, and disturbed never does well. Can you see the parallels here? Can you just see why he used this? The more I study this, the deeper it goes, and it's like, wow. Now, it's not all, it's, it is not generally known that sheep are so timid and easily panicked. I did not know that when I started to study this. When a startled sheep runs because of a sudden movement or sound, the others will bolt, bolt for fear along with them, not knowing what the fear is. All it takes is one, and they all follow. Hey, what are we running for? I don't know, but he's running. He must know something, so let's follow. Does that sound like people? Hey, something's going on. What are we doing? I don't know, but let's go and do it all the way, man. 
So that's kind of what's going on. Now the shepherd tells the story of such an incident. So this is what the shepherd says happened to him. One day a friend came out to my farm to visit. In the car they brought their dog. And as soon as the door opened of the car, the dog ran out and barking and running around. Well, guess what happened? In sheer panic, over 200 of his sheep that were there leapt up and ran and bolted across the pasture. Dog wasn't going to hurt them. He didn't know that. That was their response. He says, now when I invite friends, I tell them, leave your dog at home. I don't want him out here. Makes very good sense. Now, as long as there is even the slightest suspicion of danger, whether it be from dogs, coyotes, cougars, bears, or whatever the enemy happens to be, the sheep stand up and run. They're always on alert. They're, they're not resting. So that's why when we read in the verse, he makes me to lie down because sheep don't usually want to do that. As soon as they hear the noise, they stand up and run. As you look at a sheep, they have little to no means of self-defense. They're usually pretty defenseless out there in the field, so their only recourse is to get up and run. They are helpless, they are timid, they are feeble, whose only recourse is to scurry away. And so when they hear a sound, they run. That's why it's hard to make a sheep lay down. They are fearful all the time. Danger is always present, the shepherd was saying. He said stray dogs one night killed over 200 sheep in him and his neighbor's pastures. Over 200 just to kill the sheep. Not to eat them just to kill them. Ewes heavy with lambs have been chased by predators, and as they are fleeing from the pet, uh, predators, remember a ewe lamb is one that's heavy with a baby usually, and he goes, they've been known to run so hard and so fast they abort their young and leave it behind, and then the predator gets it because they are so fearful. He said, one night a cougar got into his sheep and killed nine of them. Just one night. Ate a couple and just was having sport. He said that nothing seemed to quiet and reassure his sheep so much. I'm sorry. Um, as a shepherd, he knew he needed to do something. So this was his recourse. He slept with the rifle a flashlight, and his dog. And at the slightest sound, he would get up and charge to protect his sheep. How many hours a day do you think this took him? It was 24 hours a day. He never took any time off because if he took time off, it meant the death to some of his sheep. And he could not afford that. At the least down of disturbance, he raised dashed into the field to protect his sheep, not caring what the predator was, if it was a bear or a cougar, just like David. He talked about, I killed a bear and a lion. He didn't care what the predator was. What was his job? To protect his sheep. And he was going to do it at the cost of his life because that was his job. Sounds like our shepherd, doesn't it? He also said that nothing seemed to, to quiet and reassure his sheep as seeing him in the field. When they saw him out there, the sheep knew he was there to protect them. The presence of the master, the protector, put the sheep at ease, and that's when they were made to lie down, when they felt secure that the master was over watching them. In the Christian's life, there is no substitute for the keen awareness of the Good Shepherd. To know that he is out there. One thing 
that has been very keen in the last few weeks um, with the death of the two young men, uh, Dave Avella, one of the police officers. There has been a keen awareness on, of the people, for the most part, that there is a God. And it has opened the door to me for me to share who the Good Shepherd is. They have wanted me to come by and pray. Um, actually, last month I started devotionals for the police department on the Good Shepherd. And I'm on the second one and I'm gonna continue that. They are enjoying this. I've been able to meet with Bev Avello, Dave's wife, and she has held my hand, we have prayed, I have shared the gospel with the family and told them who God was. I wouldn't have had that opportunity if this did not happen, nor would I have the opportunity and the freedom to speak this if this didn't happen to those in the police department and the village of Addison. This is huge. To see God's hand working is a humbling thing. And it's like, I want God to use someone else, but he says, I'm going to use you. And it's like, okay, but if somebody else comes along, God use them. I feel like Moses sometimes. You know, I don't have a brother named Aaron. Otherwise, I would probably use him. God has put me there. And as uncomfortable as it is, it is quite an honor that God has seen that he can use me in this position. All he wants from somebody, we don't have to be talented. You know, I'm, I'm living proof of that. He wants us to be available uh, and willing. And that's, that's a big, big thing. So in the Christian life, there is no substitute for the keen awareness of the Good Shepherd. Why? Why is there no substitute? Well, if you have not known this in the last year, life can bring disaster. It can bring danger. It can bring distress, bad news, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is, there is not one day that is guaranteed. Have you ever woke up in the morning, had a schedule of things you were going to do, and with an hour, all those things changed? Man, man makes the plans. God brings them about. And I was able to share the passage in James that says, you know, businessmen go to and fro, going, I'm going to go buy and sell and be gone for a year and do this and that. And James, the half-brother of Jesus, says, say not, this is what I will do, but say, if God wills, this is what I will do. And then right after that, um, he says, life is only a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. So he's telling us, be careful how you make plans. I have learned that if God wills, this is what I'm going to do but things can change, change in an instant. COVID hit us, our lives have changed forever on everything that has happened. We look at things a little bit differently than we will ever. Life is full of hazards, I think you will agree. We either live of one of these two ways. We either live in a sense of anxiety, fear, and foreboding as the sheep that did not have their shepherd in the field and always fearful or in a sense of quiet rest. I guess it depends on who your master is. If you live in an area that anxiety, fear, and foreboding are overtaking you all the time, maybe you need to get in a relationship with the good shepherd, the master. Maybe you need to understand that. Then in the midst of the situation, there suddenly comes awareness that Christ, the Good Shepherd, is there. He is there. Doesn't matter what happens, once you calm down, step back from the situation, allow God to work a little bit, you can see that the Good Shepherd is there. I don't know about you, but the last year has proven me stepping back from a situation makes all the difference in the world. His presence throws a different light on the circumstance. 
okay, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know God will protect and guide. He says, what, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I believe those words. In the midst of the worst thing that can happen, his presence throws a different light on it. Suddenly, the times are not so bleak and terrifying. The outlook changes from disaster to hope. Rest returns and trust takes over. Turn with me back to Psalm chapter 4. And I'm going to read that chapter. Don't worry, it's, it's only eight verses. I'm not going to read Psalm 119. Uh, that would be my whole message. Uh, at a shepherd's conference a couple years ago, one of the speakers, he started off reading Psalm 119. And he didn't intend to, but he read the whole psalm. It was really good. I had never heard it read like that. So Psalm chapter 4. Listen what he says here about trusting in God. This is David, the writer of Psalm 23 in most of the psalms. He says this, Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O sons of men, how long will my honor become a reproach? How long will you love what is worthless and aim at its deception? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly man for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their, their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. That is the job of the good shepherd, to make me dwell in safety. And this is the continuing theme of this passage. In conclusion tonight, the special work of the Holy Spirit is what? That of comforter, correct? So the special work of the Spirit is to carry on the sense of Christ's presence to our fearful hearts. In those times, the Spirit fills us. The Spirit comes quietly to reassure us that Christ is aware of our problems and our hurt. And in this assurance, we rest and relax and trust in the Good Shepherd. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Those are reassuring words, and I hope they will reassure you tonight. So next week, uh, we are going to look at the second thing, freedom from friction from other sheep. How cruel are sheep to one another? I think it will surprise you. It surprised me.